In the previous video, we skipped all of the code inside the while loop. So today we'll go over some code inside the while loop, and we'll only write the code for a single iteration. First, I'm going to open Uniswap B3 pull contract, and this is the code inside the while loop. First, let's copy over the condition of the while loop. So the condition is while amount specified remaining is not equal to zero, and the current square root price x96 is not equal to the limit. Amount specified remaining will be greater than zero for exact input and less than zero for exact output. So in our code, you'll say state dot amount specified remaining not equal to zero and state dot square root price x96 not equal to square root price limit x96. Okay, the next step is to initialize a struct called step computations. So I'll just copy this and then paste it here. And then the next step is to initialize a step computations. Set the square root price start x96 to the current square root price x96. Copy this. Okay, scrolling down. The next code gets the next initialized take, but since we're only dealing with a single iteration, we'll skip this code for now. And in the next video, I'll explain the algorithm for how to get the next initialized tick. So here I'll just put to do. Okay, moving on. The next step is a check on the next tick. We'll skip this for now. Okay, the next line is to calculate the next square root price x96. So I'll copy this, paste it here. So we copy this code, step is initialized, tick next is initialized to the default value zero. So let's set this tick next to something other than zero. I'm gonna scroll up and we can get the current tick by accessing state.tick. So for now I'll just set step dot tick next to be equal to state.tick plus one. Now it doesn't really matter what we put over here. We'll revisit this code when we do a swap for multi-ticks. Okay, the next step is to call the function compute swap step. And this function will calculate the square root price x96, amount in, amount out, and the fees amount. So I'll copy this and then paste it here. Now notice here that it has some complex if conditions. So I want to explain what's going on here. So what this code is doing here is bounding the next square root price x96 to the square root price limit. For example, for a 0 for 1 trade, if the next square root price x96 is to the left of the limit, then we return the limit. So we get the max of the next square root price x96 and square root price limit. On the other hand, if it was a 1 for 0 trade, then we want to bound the next square root price to be less than the limit. And we do this by getting the minimum of the next and the limit. If it is a 0 for 1 trade, then we evaluate this condition. If the next square root price is less than the limit, then we return the limit. Otherwise, we return the next one. On the other hand, if it was not a 0 for 1 trade, then we evaluate this condition. Is the next square root price greater than the limit? If it is, then we return the minimum of these two number. So we return square root price limit. Otherwise, we return the next. Okay, let's move on. So going back to the Uniswap B3 pool contract, the next thing that I'm going to explain is this code. So I'll copy this code and then, and then paste it here and then refactor the code a little bit. Okay, so if the swap is an exact input, the amount specified remaining will be greater than zero. The while loop continues while amount specified remaining is not equal to zero. For exact input, we start out with a number greater than zero. So we want to approach zero. So we minus step amount in and the fee amount. Amount calculated will be a negative number, so we subtract the amount that was calculated. On the other hand, if it was not an exact input, then amount specified remaining will be less than zero. To get to zero, we add step dot amount out. And then amount calculated will be the amount that's coming in, so we add step that amount in plus the fee. Okay, let's move on. Let's go back to Uniswap B3 pull contract, scroll down. Fee protocol, we don't have this in our contract. Scrolling down, updating global fee tracker. We'll cover this in another video. So I'll go back to our contract and then put a note. Okay, I'm going back to Uniswap B3 pull contract again. Okay, the next step is to update the tick. However, since our code for now will only do a swap for one iteration, we will skip this part of the code. So what I'm gonna do is 
copy this part of the code and then paste it here and then make a note to complete this in another video. Okay, scrolling down and that completes the while loop. So in this video we started writing the code inside the while loop and we only handle the case for one iteration. Before we can complete this function, I want to explain how to get the next tick. The algorithm that's used inside the Uniswap B3 pull contract to get the next tick. 